Hit stop is when your character's animation freezes when dealing or receiving damage. In this video I will talk about the concept of hit stop, how to implement it in a simple way with Unreal Engine blueprints and also how to tweak it and make improvements to it. A thing we first need to clear up to alleviate confusion is that hit stop and hit stun are not the same thing. Hit stun will only affect the victim of an attack and disallow blocking so that the attacker can connect the combo or use the advantage for a setup. Hit stop on the other hand will generally affect both the attacker and the victim and is used to make interactions feel more powerful and also give the player's eyes a few milliseconds to catch up to what is happening on the screen. The background and the other characters are usually not affected. Hit stop is most well known for being used in fighting games, but there are also many third person action games that implement hit stop to give the hits more impact. However, there's also many fighting games or action games that don't use hit stop and still feel impactful. So you need to decide if this would improve your game or not. But it is actually very easy to implement and doesn't take much time, so there's no fault in just trying it out and seeing how it feels. So let's get started. I will use my 2.5D beat'em up as an example here, but this works just the same way with 3D characters using a skeletal mesh. We basically just need to create two very simple functions, start hit stop and end hit stop. In start hit stop we set the custom time dilation to zero, which will basically freeze our character, and then call end hit stop through set timer by function name. We also want to pass in a hit stop duration to start hit stop and use that as the delay before calling end hit stop. And hit stop only sets the custom time dilation back to 1. We then simply need to find the part in our blueprint where we apply damage after an attack and then call start hit stop on both the attacker and the defender. And that is basically all there is for the simple implementation. But there are still many more things that we can tweak or make better. The first thing you probably want to do is allow different hit stop durations for different attacks. There are many ways you could go about this, such as using the damage amount and a multiplier, but I like to have more control over it and use a data asset to explicitly set the duration for each move. Data assets are a topic on their own, so I won't go into detail here, but they can basically be used to cleanly set values like damage, hit stun and hit stop on a by attack basis. There is also a column I found by Sakurai-san talking about hitstop in the Smash Bros games and how it affects gameplay. For example, he talks about how he would have liked to make the hitstop even stronger but couldn't because it would leave the attacker too vulnerable in game modes with three or more characters. It's a great read so you should probably check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. He also talks about shaking the character mesh or sprite of the victim during hitstop for a really nice effect. You might think that the actor will stop ticking when setting time dilation to zero when we apply hit stun, but that is actually not the case. So we can use the tick function or a subroutine to shake the sprite here. A thing he mentions is that you don't want to move your hitbox with this, but only the visual part of your character to have more consistent hit detection. To achieve this I simply created an event with a flip flop that will move the sprite left or right. This can then be called where you apply your hit stop and should end once the hit stop is over. With this implementation the effect is only really noticeable for attacks with long hit stop, so depending on the kind of game you're making you might actually want to tie this to hit stun instead to make it more pronounced. I previously made a simple fighting game within a week but didn't know much about hit stop at all so I just left it out. But using this method I was able to go back into the project and add it within 5 minutes and it already made the game feel a lot better. So I definitely advise you to try this out for your game and see how it feels. I make devlogs and game dev tutorials on a consistent basis and a lot of them revolve around fighting games or beat em ups. So if you're new to this channel and enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.